Miss Gouda. Gouda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she had different ways to approach everything. She's out of the box. <laughs> yeah. My name is April Gudenrath and I am an English teacher and a philosophy teacher at Discovery Canyon High School in Colorado Springs. Most of our time in the classroom is not her really lecturing, it's us um, having conversations within our, uh, within our class. Ms. G doesn't have to lecture us and have that whole, you know, okay guys sit down and take notes because we do that all at home. She's using technology as a tool to make her job more effective by taking some of the lectures, some of the videos, some of the things out of the classroom and putting them online so the kids watch it. When they get there, they're ready for her, they're ready for her expertise, they're ready to discuss. So religion said, don't kill yourself, Hamlet, and then religion at the same time said, but it's okay to avenge your father's yeah. death. You can never expect the same thing. Like, we walked in today and I'm like, oh, we're going to read Hamlet today. No, wrong. We're going to play Hamlet today. So, here's my question. Who's responsible for all the deaths in Hamlet? Claudius King. Oh, I guess it's the first. Barton Bross. I think it's, well, depending on how you look this we had the conversation in class where we said that. The coolest experience I think I have as a teacher is just sitting around and listening to the kids talk and I learn from them and seeing where they're going with the piece of literature. I think the real growing and learning happens when we're all talking and throwing ideas around and stuff like that. At home we can look at the, like, the videos about background on the author or stuff like that and we can just get that in our head and then we come to class with all that and have really great discussions. Last year, my students have to do a, it's called a written assignment, and they do it based on uh, some of the readings that we did that semester. I made a conscious effort and I flipped all the, my entire junior curriculum. And by doing that, I was able to free up about six weeks near the end of the school year. And so for six weeks, I was able to sit down with each of the students at least once a week, and we would go through the, the, the drafts of their paper. She led us through the process. Like, she taught us how to write a good thesis, how to write a good skeleton outline. We went through, we did activities where we would record it, and then let other students listen to it and got feedback. If I didn't see them that day, I would go home and do recordings using Jing, giving them some very directed feedback. So if we change this, the illustrations of the book are just as distinct as the colors are, having no, re no real hidden meaning. Because if we said that, then it ties into the medium of the graphic novel, which is what you're talking about here in your evidence. On the computer screen, you can see your paper. So it's kind of like you're with mystery, but you're not. Reading comments is one thing, but hearing it from the teacher and like the way she says it is a different thing. There's only so much time that you can spend with each of us. So this is just another way to reach us outside a class that helps us develop our papers. At the end of the six weeks, I mean, it's mind-blowing um, how different they are and, uh, and how in-depth they went. I asked the kids, okay, so what happened? What, what is the one thing they can credit this to? And they said the fact that we were able to sit with you. We had time to talk to you. We got your feedback. My name is April Gudenrath, and I help my kids succeed by using Camtasia and Jane.